NVIDIA is actually doing it. They're about to release desktop gaming CPUs to take on AMD and Intel's best. But before I get to that, AMD's upcoming GPU just leaked, and NVIDIA GPU owners just got a huge performance jump. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we're starting to get some serious leaks on AMD's upcoming 9060 XT. This time, we have a couple GPUs that were listed on Amazon, obviously by mistake. As you can see here, we have the XFX Swift AMD Radeon 9060 XT OC Gaming Edition. This is, of course, the 8GB model. Then we have the XFX Swift 9060 XT OC Triple Fan Gaming Edition. And this is the 16 gigabyte model. Now, before I get to the pricing, as you can see, the leaks were absolutely spot on yet again because the boost clocks get all the way up to 3320 megahertz. And of course, when I was originally going over the specs for this, the core count was significantly less than the 9070, but like I'd said, the boost clocks got a pretty massive boost, and that is clearly the case. Now, when it comes to that pricing, a lot of people are really upset about this, and rightfully so, but as you can see, that 8 gigabyte model is listed at $449, so 450 bucks. And then of course, the 16 gigabyte model is a whopping 520 bucks. But I'm simply gonna state it right here. There is no way this is correct. There's simply no way that AMD is gonna release these GPUs you know, I mean, this is the 8 gigabyte model, 450 bucks. There's no way they're going to release it for almost $100 more than the 5060 Ti. So I definitely think that this is just placeholder pricing. I wouldn't be too concerned about this, but at least when it comes to performance, it is definitely looking to be exactly what the leak said. Now, we all know that in PC gaming, airflow is king. So why are you still wearing a ring that traps in more heat than a stock cooler? Luckily, that's where today's sponsor comes in. Groove Life and their new tungsten groove rings, which for one are made from one of the hardest metals on earth. So they're resistant to scratches, dings, and all that good stuff. But they also have these precision grooves on the inside that promote airflow and keep moisture away from your skin. So your finger stays dry and cool. Basically, it's made for people who use their hands, whether that's building a PC or building a house. Plus, let's be honest, it looks amazing. And like all Groove products, it's covered by their Groove guarantee. If anything goes wrong with it, they'll make it right. And get this, Groove Life actually makes the wallet I bought myself and have been personally using for over a year now. It's able to be really small while still having that cool sliding mechanism. I seriously love this thing. So check both of these out and their awesome belts by visiting my link in the description below. And next up for today, NVIDIA GPU owners are about to get a very nice surprise. As you can see right here, it says NVIDIA adds Vulkan compatibility to smooth motion frame generation. Now, for those who may not remember exactly what smooth motion frame generation is, as you can see, it's NVIDIA's competitor to AMD's fluid motion frames. And of course, fluid motion frames along with smooth motion is effectively driver level frame generation. And that of course means that game developers don't have to add support for DLSS or anything like that. It just works in pretty much any game. Now before, Smooth Motion only was supported with DX11 and DX12 games, but now they've added support for Vulkan titles. Basically, if you weren't getting enough performance in one of these games that don't support DLSS or FSR or anything like that, this can definitely help. Now, unfortunately, as you can see here, this is still only supported on NVIDIA's newest RTX 50 series GPUs. Once again, I would definitely argue, especially with this tech, that it's almost certainly just to kind of push you to get their newer GPUs. It's like an artificial limitation to make their newer cards look better than what they actually are. Still, it definitely is nice to see that NVIDIA is releasing this stuff to better compete with AMD. 
And lastly for today, Nvidia is about to release desktop gaming CPUs that could completely destroy the market. This story is bonkers. So if you follow this channel, you know that a little while back I covered a story about Nvidia collaborating with MediaTek to make a PC chip. Now they were touting AI PC, but just like I said then, an AI PC is just the new branding of PCs that can game, do everyday tasks, and can do some localized AI. Think of Microsoft's Copilot Plus PCs. Well, it's even bigger than we thought because it looks like that collaboration is set to bring some monster chips to not only notebooks, but yes, desktop, and they can game. So when it comes to these, there are two series of processors, the N1X and N1, and they're both derived from NVIDIA's brand new DGX Spark mini PCs. Now, according to a news story originally from Computerbase, the N1X series is apparently designed for desktops, while the N1 non-X would target laptops. So let's kind of go over some of these. First up, as you can see right here, it says, through its partnership with MediaTek, NVIDIA hopes to address markets that are currently served by AMD's APUs with high-performance Radeon graphics, as well as ARM-based Snapdragon X processors. So yes, these are APUs, or well, more generically, SOCs, APUs are technically AMD's branding of CPUs with an integrated GPU. Now, you might be kind of tuning out at this point, oh, an APU, no big deal, but this is looking seriously impressive. So as you can see, to go further, it says NVIDIA's discrete Blackwell GPUs promise to offer higher performance and better compatibility with games than AMD's Radeon and Qualcomm's Adreno. So without any doubt, as they state, it will attract attention of gamers. Now, when it comes to these chips, apparently the highest end one comes with 10 Cortex X925 high performance cores and up to 10 Cortex A725 cores. Now, you might be thinking that A725 is basically little cores, but technically, when it comes to these ARM cores, it's more of a medium core. So we're talking high performance cores and more of a medium level core. And that, of course, means 20 cores total. So like I said, definitely not a joke. And it actually gets even more impressive. So when we look at what these are originally derived from, the NVIDIA DGX Spark, you can see exact same cores, 20 total ARM cores with both of those ones that I just went over. And then of course, it also comes with their new NVIDIA Blackwell architecture for the integrated GPU. But then when we look at system memory, we're talking 128 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory. Now it is unified system memory, but still that's no joke. And in fact, it even gets more impressive because when we go back to this video cards article, as you can see in DGX Spark, which of course is what this is derived from, the Blackwell GPU is capable of delivering a whopping one petaflop of compute at FP4 precision. Now, don't get too excited because this is FP4 precision. This is not the compute performance that you use when gaming. That is FP32 single precision compute. So it will of course be significantly less, but but for reference, just to give you an idea, NVIDIA's RTX 5090 at FP4 compute gets around 3.3 petaflops of performance. So given the cores are very similar, which of course they should be, this still should be an absolute monster of a gaming chip. And in fact, I would argue that it's likely set to compete with AMD's Strix Halo APUs, which is seriously a surprise because I figured that Nvidia's next gen would take a more conservative approach to performance, but it seems like they're going all out. With that said, the DGX Spark is apparently around four grand, so I'm not sure what to expect as far as price. And of course, there will likely be multiple chips down the product stack, but still, this is seriously impressive. Now, I do wonder exactly how NVIDIA plans to do it. They'll likely work with system integrators to make pre-built PCs. I doubt they would launch a board ecosystem or anything like that, but maybe that could be later on. Either way, I'm excited to see where this goes. And the best part is that we won't have to wait long because the leaks point to a debut at Computex of this year, which is just one week away.